you probably will have heard that uh, part of the problem uh, in Malawi is probably the result of what one might say international interference. You had the ambassador talking about the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, uh, they brought in with these institutions. And of course, he might have even added Great Britain. Right. Uh, I think what the ambassador failed to explain is the intolerance of the president of Malawi. Uh, he, uh, uh, what I would say, Shaka, is that the DPP, the current regime, they are able to talk statistics about the, the progress Malawi is taking. They are able to talk about uh, the food security. They will, they will build uh, the president up to heaven if they have to. But the bottom line is that Malawians are tired of, of, of his leadership because of his intolerance to criticism, because of his ha handling of the opposition, because of his handling of the constitution. There are so many uh, variations to, to his leadership that the, the ambassador has failed to explain. So if he, uh, they start pointing fingers at the international community, I, I would say that the civil society in Malawi, they had no choice. There was a time they, uh, they were summoned to the State House to speak to the president, where the president, upon hearing the, uh, uh, the demands of the civil society, he had to bang his table, telling them that they cannot demand anything from him. They cannot give him an ultimatum. So he is a, a, a president who is ready to, to destroy anyone who, who, who critiques him. That's the, the, the main reason why Malawians are angry with him right now. That's the, the, the main reason why uh, the, the British um, uh, High Commissioner to Malawi was, was expelled. Uh, Cochrane died. He actually sent a cable to, 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 to his officials here in the UK, but that cable was leaked. Upon seeing that, the president was upset because he is intolerant to criticism. And in that, in that cable, it was, it, it, it was revealed uh, that Bingwa Mutarika cannot be criticized. He does not respect the constitution of the country. That is the reason why the, the, the High Commissioner was expelled. So tell me, Shaka, what kind of leadership is, 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 is that which compels everyone to comply to, 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 to your demands, to your thought processes? That's the problem that Malawians have with their leader. But what that happened, is the reason why civil society... But what yeah. happened to the Malawians, for example, the spirit of the Malawians who, back in 2004, prevented, for example, then incumbent President Bakiri Muluzi from shifting the political constitutional goalposts. Where did they go and where did Binga or Mudarika get all this power that you are talking about? Yeah, because uh, I think uh, different politicians, they come with different strategies. Being, uh, Bakiri Muluzi was not as, as, as strategic in, in, in authoritarianism as Bingu is. I will tell you why. Uh, B, uh, the, the former president, Bakiri Muluzi, I think he did not push it further when he wanted to, 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 to change the goalposts for uh, 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 constitutional changes. Well, Bingu Mutarika, he has used all, all manner of, 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 of what we can say, uh, political strategies to, to change the constitution. Um, the first one you heard internationally, there were the uh, uh, anti-fraudulent laws that were, you know, gimmicks of the DPP just to, 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 to test the waters. Then there was the repress uh, repressive law of Section 46, which denied the media certain rights. Then now we have the injunction bill, which, which allows the government to stop publication of certain, uh, certain stories that expose uh, corrupt practices in the DPP regime. I have to point out one thing, Shaka. The ambassador uh, uh, Bola, he is part of this regime. He is part of this corrupt dictatorial regime of Dr. Bingwa Mutarika. So whatever they say, it is because they want to make sure that the international community sees them in a different right. But the truth of the matter is Malawians are upset, and that is the reason why Malawians went to the streets. At the moment, 19 people have died. The priority of the president was to go and inspect the, the, the places that were vand, uh, vandalized, uh, such places of his business compatriots, instead of going to actually visit the, the families of the deceased. 
So you can see the, pri the priorities of the president who seems to be democratic. Is that what you call a democratic leadership? But that is the reason why Malawians are angry. But at least you have to give credit to Ambassador Bola for initially uh, taking the opportunity, frankly, to extend his personal and perhaps government's, uh, uh, government's uh, condolences to the aggrieved families of the people who died. No, uh, yeah, uh, actually, I, Ambassador Bola, he might not be directly involved in the, uh, in, in the corrupt practices of the DPP or in anything the DPP does because he is not in Malawi. But the, I, I would say that the condolences, they come from him, because uh, we have to actually di put a distinction here. Uh, ambassadors of the country are not directly rulers. They are not engaged directly with the people. So if they, they are repressive laws being introduced, the ambassadors are not involved in that category. So I would say the condolences, yes, they are, they are uh, that, that's, uh, in Africa we call Ubuntu. That's our nature, our humanity. So yes, it's acceptable. We, and uh, I, I respect uh, Ambassador Bola for that. Thank you. But Thank you very much. But we must not ignore the fact. Thank you.